Cheryl Herrick at the Center for Sustainable Agriculture, and I'm here with Juan Alves, the Pasture Technical Coordinator with the Pasture Program at the Center for Sustainable Ag. And he has a new publication, and we're going to put the link up so you can access that publication online. But he's going to tell us why this work is um, or might be of interest to Vermont farmers and um, other folks in the community. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, yes, yeah, so this publication arise from a relationship we developed uh, um, a number of years ago with uh, Dr. Uh, Eduardo Ferreira Sales. Um, he's a Brazilian scholar from the University of Espiritu Santo, and he did his um, PhD um, in the University of Cordoba, Spain, where a very, very uh, important center for um, agroecology um, uh, exists. And, uh, we um, we have common uh, common common topics uh, regarding you know agroforestry agroecology, and he uh, kindly invited me to uh, participate in this publication, uh, which uh, was published uh, about a month ago, or or less. That's great. And so, what what was your part in the research, or in the publication? I guess. Yes. So my part in the publication, I oversaw the the writing, and I over I I sort of you know was the uh, person in charge of uh, making it into an English um, language publication, but also uh, the statistics and some of the some of the um, discussion items in the discussion. And, and the conclusion, of course. Um, it, the publication is about um, intercropping um, Ambarella, which uh, is um, Spondias dulcis Parkinson in, in Latin, which is irrelevant right now, but it's about intercropping a very valuable crop like coffee with a, a fruit tree, basically. And, and why is that important in, in the context of in the state of Espiritu Santo in Brazil? Is because more than um, more than eighty percent of the coffee production in Brazil is um, done under the sun, so no shaded coffee, which uh, would have great advantages when when you shade coffee because the coffee coffee likes to be shaded. It will produce more. So why not taking advantage of another fruit tree that you can uh, draw fruits from it and then market, you know, uh, locally or regionally. And how is that uh, something that Vermont farmers might learn from and apply here? Um, it's the mental shift of trying to um, combine things. Maybe two, maybe three things together where um, this, e each of these components will be beneficial to the other component and uh, in all they will be beneficial to the farm and to the um, environment and the, the economics of the, the farm setting. So uh, intercropping, we intercropped with, uh, it's easy to do research with intercropping two species but you can intercrop more species and Yes, it will be more complicated because you will learn and things don't grow fast. In Brazil, they grow a little faster, but um, you um, you learn. You had to do like a, a research to to see what can be um, intercropped with what. And. By doing that, the benefits that you get from from this intercropping um, are all positives. And is there anybody doing similar work in the area? And, and I guess I'm wondering about specific um, products and specific species. Uh, how are how are people doing that here, if anybody is? Well, um, I understand that there are some people uh, working on permacultural um, design and, and they are combining and intercropping uh, different trees and crops uh, together, uh, which is very desirable. Uh, but the level of knowledge you have to have to do that is um, is quite substantial. 
you, you need to know about you know soils you need to know about you know climate you know uh, uh, hardiness uh, about you know root systems about you know uh, what produces what in what time in what time of the year it, it's a, it's like a puzzle that you have to put together and um, there are a few people working uh, with that in Vermont, but not not many. It's it's a practice that that is not because it's complex. It's I I I think if farmers don't um, they are overwhelmed right now uh, with um, everything they have in hands. But I, I think it's a practice that uses uh, biomimicry because uh, that's how nature uh, operates. So by imitating nature and how nature relates, you know, in, in terms of plants, microbes, animals, and um, human management, um, I think we can build a really resilient food systems in Vermont, a really resilient agricultural system in Vermont, and not only from the point of view of the environment, but from the point of view of regenerating um, uh, carbon into the soil, regenerating the economy, creating new products, creating new markets, uh, new new trends, um, bringing new species that we can um, consume. I think that would be very advantageous and, and it can be done. Agriculture is not regenerative if you don't add trees. Um, trees are kind of the apotheosis, <laughs> you know of sustainable agriculture so farming with trees is is really um what the climax um, should be in sustainable agriculture 